Hey guys, Butler Bulldog Bill here, and I am about to recap the Butler at Valparaiso game that took place last Friday night. Uh, but before I do, um, first order of business. Um, this hat here I have had, uh, this is my first Butler hat, and uh, I finally had to have it replaced. Um, problem with this hat is it's one fit, and... Uh, my head's too freaking big for one fits for whatever reason. It feels like I'm squeezing the crap out of my head to where my blood vessels are going to burst. So, no more one fit hats for me. I've finally found a butler hat that isn't a one fit. I had to go to the website, Butler Sports website. I got me this bad boy right here. Um, has a strap so I can adjust, you know, if I want to grow my hair out or something like that you know um, or if my head it gets any bigger uh, but anyway the new butler hat this is it right here this is the one I'm going to be wearing um, from now on and when I go to the IU game against Purdue on Sunday this is the hat I will be wearing there along with an IU shirt but we'll get into that uh, another time anyway uh, regarding the butler at Valparaiso game last Friday Butler went into this game, they controlled their own destiny. All they had to do was win the game, and they would be the number two seed in the Horizon League tournament. They would get the double bye, which meant they would have a you know a bye all the way into the semifinals. Two wins, and they would be back in the NCAA tournament. Um, it was Valparaiso senior night. Valparaiso, which I figured was going to be a little bit significant, uh, Valparaiso had already wrapped up the uh, outright Horizon League regular season championship so I figured you know they may not play as hard because they already you know they didn't have anything really to play for other than senior night and I felt like Butler had a lot more to play for and I felt like they were going to come prepared and uh, play really hard and come to win um, that didn't happen uh, Butler I uh, went in this game it was on ESPNU Friday night uh, Problem is with Butler, they uh, they just couldn't hit their shots at the beginning of the game, and I feel like if they had hit their shots there at the beginning, they would have, uh, you know, made it at least a closer game. Not necessarily saying they would have won, but they just they just got you know dominated at one point in the game. You know, basically right there at the beginning, if they had hit any you know shots, you know, if they'd had a better shooting percentage there in the first half of the first half, uh, they might have uh, done a better job, but. Valparaiso never trailed in this game. Uh, they jumped out to a 27 to 12 lead late in the first half, and you know you've got to be able to start games, start and finish. And Butler, they tried to finish it, but they got they dug too big of a hole to begin the game that they just couldn't win this one. Um, Kyle Marshall did end up did end up having uh, 17 points for Butler. Uh, and Andrew Smith had 12 points. Ronald Norhead, Norhead had 11 points and 8 uh, assists. And, uh, you know, one of the things that Valparaiso did better than Butler at in this game was free throw shooting. Valparaiso hit uh, 26 of 33 free throws, and Butler had uh, 13 of 22. So Valparaiso got to the line more, and they uh, had a better percentage. Butler needs to do a better job of, you know, taking advantage of those free throw line opportunities. Those are some easy buckets, and uh, you just got to be able to hit those. And this is something that this year's team is struggling with. That the last two years, you know, Butler has always done a pretty decent job at is hitting free throws. Butler's defense just, you know, not only did the shooting start off terribly for Butler, but uh, their defense they allowed Valparaiso to put up 71 points. Um, there was a couple guys uh, for Valparaiso, Will Bogan, uh, he had three three-pointers in 14 points. Um, they let a guy named Ben Bogg score 11 points. Ryan Brokoff uh, had nine rebounds for the Crusaders. And I, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. It's like Kevin Van Wick, something like that. I don't know. Hit eight of nine shots and he had 18 points. Um, 
So Butler let those guys, you know, take control of this game. Of course, you know, it is tough with them being their senior night, but, you know, you've got to be able to match that intensity. you got to know that coming in that they're going to be playing hard, especially when you have so much on the line. Uh, but Butler did not do that, and they lost the game 71-59. to Now, here's the deal. Um, Butler needed the two seed. They, needed, they controlled their own destiny. If they won, they got the two seed. Well, they lost. There was another way they could have gotten the two seed, and that was with um, Cleveland State losing at uh, Wright State, plus Detroit uh, losing to, or Cleveland State losing at home to Wright State, Detroit losing uh, at Youngstown State, and Wisconsin Milwaukee losing to Illinois Chicago. Uh, or I'm sorry, Wisconsin Milwaukee losing the loyal of Chicago. Uh, anyway, what actually happened was Cleveland State destroyed Wright State. Detroit defeated Youngstown State by two, and Wisconsin Milwaukee defeated loyal of Chicago. And because of that, Butler went from being a potential two seed with a double bye, only needing two wins to get to the NCAA tournament, to becoming a five seed, having to start all the way from the first round, and now they need four wins in order to get into the NCAA tournament. Um, this is gonna be a really, really difficult road for Butler. This, you know, and they only have themselves to blame. Uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, uh, they have, their first round game, they will be hosting. All the higher seeds uh, host the first rounds, first round games. So Detroit is the three seed. They'll be hosting uh, 10 seed Loyola of Chicago. Six seed Youngstown State will host seven seed Wisconsin Green Bay. Four seed Wisconsin Milwaukee will host nine seed Illinois Chicago. And fifth seeded Butler will host eight seed Wright State. Butler has defeated Wright State in both games that they played them this season. At Wright State, they won by a few points. Um, at Butler, they won by about 11. Um, and we all know what they say about teams playing, you know, for the third time during the season. If somebody's won that game twice, going into that third game, they better be worried because it's very, very difficult to beat the same team three times in a season. But Butler's going to try to do that, and they've got to do that. If they want to get back into the NCAA tournament, you know, laugh all you want, but maybe they could, you know, try to get back in there and make that three consecutive runs to the national championship. Uh, it all depends on this first game right here, and they've got to take it one game at a time. It's only going to get more difficult after that, but first they just need to focus on winning at home against Wright State. Uh, the game is at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, and... Um, a win here and they will play in the second round on Friday. In the second round and the third round are both at Valparaiso since the number one seed uh, since they're the number one seed so the number one seed gets the host this second round and the semifinals. And the championship game is at the site of the higher uh, remaining seed. So even if Valparaiso loses, whoever the highest seed into the championship game is will get to host the home or host the championship game. So, but anyway, Butler, you know, tough loss Friday night, and now uh, this Horizon League tournament is all they have to get a shot at the NCAA tournament. They're going to need four wins. They're going to have to start it off with Wright State tomorrow night at seven o'clock at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Uh, thanks again, guys, for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a good day, y'all.